Proposition 30, and in tandem with it, I'm going to talk a little bit about Proposition 38, because these are related issues. Now, the way that the California budget passed this year, we're already in the hole. And the budget was passed on the basis of us having $6 billion out of this particular bill. Okay. If this bill were to not pass, right now, and most of it is, is K-12. Most of it is, um, is school, also community college, also there are safety, also the universities, but really primarily K-12. We're looking at that money coming out of the school budgets this year. So I don't know how many of you guys work in school or have kids in school. I work in uh, the Simi Valley Unified School District, and we are planning on 15 furlough days at the end of the school year if we don't have the, the money to run. So this would be substantial. Uh, so the way that this, this proposition came to be is Governor Brown had a proposition, and so did the California Teachers Federation. And they were a little bit different. And one of the things that they understood was if we have too many tax, taxing propositions on the ballot, people won't pass them. Maybe none of them will pass. There, people are not likely to pass a lot of propositions to tax themselves. So the governor and the, and the teachers got together and compromised on this ballot proposition. The, the governor had more sales tax revenue, the teachers had more income tax revenue. Okay, we came together and we have this bill. Which, what does it do? It increases the state sales tax from, right now it's 7.25% to 7.5%. It, it creates an income tax increase that will be temporary, that will be for seven years, and it's progressive. So depending on, it starts at $250,000 a year, and then there's another level at 300, and another level at 500, and an, another level at a million dollars of income a year. The tax, the um, income tax would be retroactive for the income of this current year. And what would happen is, so for instance, if, if your family earns $250,000, your income tax rate would go from 9.3% to 10.3%. Let's say that you earn a million dollars a year. That would be very nice. Your, <laughs> your income tax rate would go from 10.3% to 13.3%. Okay, and this would be for seven years for that limited period of time. It is designed to, 89% of it is schools. 11% of it is, I'm sorry? Oh, okay. 89%, hold on a second. 89% for K through 12, and 11% to our community colleges, which, are really the place where we are not only educating our kids but retraining our workers so we can get them back to work. This frees up some money then for public safety and that's really the idea of this bill. So who's supporting it? Well, Jerry Brown, the League of Women Voters, the California Democratic Party, teachers, the California teachers, the uh, the classified staff in the, in the schools as well. And, and the fact that it's temporary, which really says hopefully we're back, we're back, our economy is back, and we're supporting our, our schools. Okay. Now, who is opposing it? Every taxpayer organization, so I know you're probably familiar with the Howard Drive, Howard Jarvis Taxpayer Association. This is a tax, so we don't want taxes. Um, and the Sacramento Taxpayer Association and the California Republican Party. Um, their arguments are that they're 
is not a guaranteed reform in the schools. No, the money goes to the school districts and they will use it to run their schools. We have state standards. We are improving, increasing our state standards all the time, but cer certainly no, it isn't for that purpose. Uh, and, and they claim that there won't be cuts. Well, my experience as a school district employee is I know that I'm looking at three weeks less school and much bigger class sizes if this doesn't pass. So that, that's kind of the issue on that. Now, Proposition 38 is also designed to send money to schools, not community colleges, preschool and K through 12. Molly Munger designed this bill, paid to get it on the ballot, paid to collect the signatures to get it on the ballot, and has put in, let me see how much is in here. I'll tell you in one second. $33 million to get it passed. And then there are some other, you know, some other donors of $10,000 a piece, but it's, it's Molly Munger. And one of, she was invited to work with the governor and with the California Teachers Federation to have one bill because everyone felt like if we have too many bills on the ballot, no bills will pass and our schools will really suffer. She absolutely flat out refused, has not wanted any cooperation whatsoever so she has her own bill, and this is this is what she says about that and about Jerry, the Jerry Brown uh, initiative. I don't think we have a very good functioning democracy if we always just did what one person at the top wanted. In fact, one of the reasons we have democracy is because that old method where you just do what the king says led to some very bad decisions over time. And I think it's really interesting because she is one person who is saying this is how we're going to do it. I just find that really interesting that that's, that that's her perspective on that one. Uh, so the other, the only organization that's working closely with her on this is the PTA. The, what if both bills pass? What happens if both bills pass? The bill that has the most votes takes precedence. If Proposition 30 gets more votes in the bill, it is written that then Proposition 38 is, is null, goes out. If Proposition 38 has more votes, then certain aspects of 30 will stay, but the basic process of the taxing and how the money is distributed aren't are not done. Okay. So some of the school districts are urging their uh, their employees and their and their parents and such. We desperately need the money. Just vote for both of them. Um, but but I think you need to really look at these and say which for, which is good. What do you want to do about it? Okay. Good. Okay. 